Alright folks, how's it going today? I want to welcome you to another tutorial on coloring comic books by the Overground Comic Company. You can find us, as you see on the screen here, at overgroundcomics.deviantart.com where you can find the Overground Collective, a, a gathering of artists working towards bettering themselves to uh, become a part of the comic book industry. So, um, also, real quick, want to thank uh, Cam Studio here, the uh, program I'm using for this uh, tutorial here. There, it's from Open Source, a uh, great free program if you want to do some screen captures. So, um, with that said, we will get on to the fun. Um, for coloring comic books professionally, uh, one big important thing is to kind of standardize your work process to make sure that all of your work uh, starts and finishes the same way. It's going to give you a good, consistent product, and uh, to do that, we're gonna we're gonna start setting up your work here in a very specific way. Uh, first thing you're gonna want to do is, uh, when coloring your comic book material, you're gonna want everything to be really sharp. And you have in a lot of your tools here a setting called anti-alias. And what you're gonna want to do normally, if you're on your basic default Photoshop settings, everything's gonna be checked. Uh, you're gonna want to just kind of browse through your tools. I believe it's lasso. Um, paint bucket and anywhere you see anti-alias or contiguous go ahead and take the check mark off so we got our round marquee tool that's off so you're just going to want to browse through your tools and turn off any anti-alias settings just for this coloring process remember you can always return to default anytime you want so you're not doing any permanent damage or anything uh, next, we're going to go ahead and scan our image in. Depending on what kind of scanner you have, you might have different kinds of importing software on Photoshop. Um, you can see when I bring up my import menu, I have an option here for the precision scan. It's because that's the software that came with my scanner. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the WIA version here. That is, um, I think, a simpler and better uh, software. Um, for the for the scanning, um, it's very simple. You're just going to scan all your line art in black and white, and then I would recommend if you got the room, which hopefully you do, to move it up to at least a 300 DPI. Uh, that's going to give you a better um, resolution, to allow you to do some finer coloring and keep your line art sharp. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and scan our image, and I'll just take a second for the scanner to warm up. For the um, project we're going to be doing today, I have created just a simple, generic kind of line art depicting a very generic superhero in a style you're all familiar with. And hopefully that will allow everything to remain clear when we're coloring. And you will see that momentarily here. Also, just a reminder, uh, Check out the collective at uh, overgroundcomics.deviantart.com. It's not something you got to audition for. If any of you out there want to become a the part of the project and better yourself or better the project, we're always accepting new members. Anybody and everybody is invited. So now the scanner is going ahead and importing the file here. You'll see it pop up in just a moment. generic superhero so we're gonna expand him out a little bit um, I'm just gonna really quickly take a second to go through and clean up some of these little lines here picking up the edge of the paper in the scanner a million different ways you can do that but not too concerned with them right now uh, now you notice everything is real crisp and clean um, there are some dots where I made the shading a little too um, a little too dark you can you know take your time just erasing those out um, yourself uh, we won't really worry about them today because frankly they don't really bother me that much and um, that's not really the purpose of what we're doing here today so um, you're gonna see that the whole uh, anti-alias uh, part that we were talking about 
is making sure that you're working in strictly two tones, black and white, no grays, no shadows around it. You may notice if you don't scan your work properly, you see a lot of those little, a lot of little snow around everything, and that's going to make your work come out less sharp. With the anti-alias settings turned off, whenever you're going to select something, it's going to uh, be a lot clearer. Now, if you scanned in the liner the way I just explained, you're going to notice when it first comes in, your mode is going to be bitmap. You're going to change that. First, you have to change it to grayscale. Go ahead and leave your size ratio 1. By the way, I'm using Photoshop CS3 for PC. Uh, some of these processes may be a little different if you're using a different version of the program or a different uh, platform, but everything is going to be basically the same. So uh, if you have any specific questions about that, get back to me. If not, just do your best kind of making the transition because it's all going to be basically the same. Uh, next step, I'm going to now change to CMYK mode. Um, if you scan an image in normally, you're generally going to be in RGB mode. Uh, we're not going to color in RGB mode today. We're going to color in CMYK because that's the standard for coloring work that will be uh, put into print. And that would be our intention today. If you're coloring things for the web, RGB is fine, but we're going to go with CMYK. Um, so you're going to need to have your channels window open. You probably don't use this one a lot if you just do things for the web, but you're going to need to have your channels dialog box open. You're going to notice that all of them are highlighted to begin with. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the black channel, and we're going to duplicate that. Go ahead and leave it at um, just name black copy, doesn't really matter. And you're going to see that you're going to have an extra channel pop up here. And now we're going to double click on that channel. Uh, when you first come up in default, you're probably going to have your color indicates is going to be masked area. You're going to want to switch to selected areas. That'll come into play later. Um, so once you have selected areas, also make sure your color is true black down here and that your opacity is 100%. Once you're done with that, click OK. And now one more step we're going to take. You're going to go back and click on CMYK again. And then you're going to select all. And you're going to go to edit, fill. And you're going to fill with white. Go ahead and leave it at opacity to 100%, mode, multiply, that's fine. And what that's going to do is if there was any uh, stray kind of junk laying around, that's going to clean it up for you and then we're going to go back to CMYK we're going to click on this little uh, eye icon here to keep the black copy layer turned on now also one more thing we're going to do here just to uh, to help see how when I um, clicked on the black copy layer and then uh, turned off these everything went kind of gray that's because we need to adjust our levels a little bit so you're going to click on the black copy channel you're going to go into adjustments levels see where this black line here that's where our true black starts so we're gonna get there by clicking on the number 25 here When we do that we're gonna get a deeper black alright so that's basically it um, that's how you set up your image to color we're gonna be ready to color in just a moment here so first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to save your file at this point so go ahead and do a save as, pick a name for the file, test, however you want, whatever you want to do. And then uh, save it and be back for part two in just a moment.